Hey guys, quick update. So I said in a community post a couple days ago that if the moon passes Gemini, then we have to use the three houses interpretation of the three taverns of Acts 2815 instead. So as of right now, the moon has left Gemini and has entered Cancer. So the interpretation that we had been using is pictured here. So we interpreted the Appy Forum uh, as Tau, because it's got pi in there twice, and pi times two is Tau. And the geographic meaning of tau is to go one full turn around a circle. So that tau hint took us from Taurus, one full turn around the circle of the ecliptic, back to Taurus. But from there, we had to interpret the three taverns hint. And the first interpretation uh, interpreted that hint as Gemini, because three taverns has two T's. And so if you take two T's, it looks like the constellation lines of Gemini. But now since the moon is outside of Gemini, we have to use the three houses interpretation, which is this right here. So instead of the moon just taking us into Gemini, now we're going to use this interpretation of the three taverns, which interprets it as three houses or three constellations. Okay, so that means the three constellations after Taurus. And those three constellations are Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. So the moon would need to travel through those three houses or those three taverns and Acts 28 15 says as far as the three taverns okay so that means it's not going to go any further than uh, Leo if I'm understanding this correctly so the moon actually enters the third constellation of Leo or the third tavern let's see here's the moon uh, around September 1st and it will remain in Leo, it looks like, until September 4th. Okay, so that's our window right there. September 1st until September 4th. And the actual new moon occurs on uh, September 2nd going into the 3rd, really depending on your time zone. So right around here. This is actually Jerusalem time zone, so this is like two in the morning or so on September 3rd, which on the Jewish calendar is the 29th of Av. And what's amazing about that is if you look at the verse that we're actually astronomically interpreting right now, which is Acts 28.15, because that's the verse that contains the Appy form and the three taverns, the part of this verse that corresponds to the actual rapture is this word meet right here. It says, and from thence when the brethren heard of us, they came out to meet us as far as the Appy Forum and the Three Taverns. And that word meet is Strong's Greek 529. And this new moon occurs on the Jewish date of Av 29 or 529. So what an amazing confirmation that this astronomical interpretation is correct. And it seems that the entire astronomical voyage, you know, starting from the 276 sign of last December, uh, is designed to take us all the way to this new moon here coming up. And what's also really cool to consider about this word meet here, Strong's Greek 529, which we've looked at in the past. It has only three usages in scripture, uh, once here in Acts 28:15, but also in these two other famous rapture-related verses, one of which is Matthew 25, 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go ye out to meet him. And... If you look at this new moon, well, what is that? That's a meeting of the sun and the moon, which is the bridegroom and the bride. So that perfectly connects the inherent meaning of Matthew 25, 6. Bridegroom meets the bride, sun meets the moon, with the astronomical interpretation of Acts 28, 15, pointing to this new moon, which is the sun meeting the moon. And it seems that the Revelation 12 sign in 2017 also may have telegraphed the dates of this new moon, because if you remember that sign uh, was on September 23rd. So it's written like that. And the dates of this new moon are September 2nd and 3rd. So you got your 923 and your 923. And what was the Revelation 12 sign all about? Well, it was about the man-child being caught up. And this can also be written in international format, which would be the 2nd and 3rd of September, like this, 239. 
And what's interesting about that is that the primary fissile isotope of nuclear weapons is plutonium-239. So I don't think that's an accident. And we've also seen the numbers 239 and 923 used in a lot of predictive programming. Um, just one example would be uh, this Invictus Games promo that featured the royal family. So you can see they have uh, the number 239 right here adjacent to 223, which is the number that they use to represent death. And if you watch the rest of this uh, Invictus Games promo, it's pretty obvious what they're signaling. It's quite close, isn't it? Oh, message? Oh, from Michelle. How very yeah. amusing. So you like to watch it together? Yes. Let's have a look. Hey, Prince Harry, remember when you told us to bring it at the Invictus Games? Careful what you wish for. Boom. Oh, really? Please. Boom. So I think that the Revelation 12 sign date of 923 and all of the predictive programming instances of 923 were all actually pointing to the upcoming new moon that occurs on September 2nd and 3rd. And finally, September 2nd also happens to be Labor Day in the United States. So what a perfect day for the woman of Revelation 12 to go into labor. All right, so we're looking at a high watch period that begins on September 2nd and remains in place as long as the moon is still in the quote unquote third tavern of Leo. Uh, so until roughly September 4th at the latest. So that's all I've got for this quick update. Thank you for watching the video and God bless. The gospel is the good news of how Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, came to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried and then he rose again three days later. He did this to give us eternal life in heaven and to save us from hell. The Bible says in Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Jesus said in John 6.47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So to be saved from hell and to have the gift of eternal life, you must trust Christ alone.